Hello, hello, hello to everyone who was drawn to this pick a card reading. This week we are delving into the shadows, the subconscious, that intangible realm, that hidden place that holds deep desires, fears, dreams, and emotions to be realized. We have four piles to choose from this week. I'll go through those with you right now. For pile number one, we have the Mystic Mondays Tarot and this piece of Mahogany Obsidian. For pile number two, we have the New Moon Tarot and this Blue Goldstone. For pile number three, we have the Collided Oak Tarot and this piece of Road Knight. And for pile number four, we have the Bad Girl Tarot and the Hematite. I'm going to give you a minute to meditate on the cards and the energy, to tap into your intuition and make a choice. The timestamps are in the description box below. Whenever you're ready, I'll see you at your reading. Pile number one, hello, hello. For those of you who chose the Mahogany Obsidian and the Mystic Mondays Tarot, thank you for being here, I love you. So I'm gonna give you a brief breakdown of what we're gonna be doing in this reading. We'll start with the tarot and we're gonna get four cards, each symbolizing something different. The first card is going to symbolize the hidden fears that may be lurking in the shadows. The second, the hidden dreams or what your higher self is drawing you towards. The third is hidden desires. And when I say desires here, I'm talking about earthly desires. And finally, the fourth card is going to be the hidden support that your guides and spirit is what, how they're supporting you, how they're guiding you, teaching you, whatever the case may be. So let's begin with the hidden fears. Let me move this here, put this here. All right, spirit, for pile number one, what are fears that are hidden from you? or that are lurking in the subconscious spirit. Oh yeah, and then after the tarot, we're gonna get the four oracle cards that I've already shuffled and pulled for you guys. Okay, what hidden fears? Are present for pile number ones. What hidden fears? Present for pile number ones. Thank you. All right, so the card, very straightforward. Your hidden fears is coming out with the card of the Nine of Swords. 
which represents anxiety. Your hidden fear is fear itself. The thing that is holding you back from reaching for your dreams and your desires is quite simply fear. This figure to me, it looks like she's she's looking out at us. She's looking out into the world. And I get this sense of curiosity about expanding, about leaving this space. But she's scared. She's scared to leave because... There's a lot of unknown out there. And that's another way to put this. Your hidden fear is fear of the unknown. Of putting yourself out there without knowing what the outcome is going to be. Of not having stability. I think that you have a really brilliant mind pile number ones, and sometimes people with a brilliant mind, one that can understand things and is very intelligent, that kind of a brain, if you don't learn how to harness it and and be the one who holds the power, it can, it, it almost runs so quickly and it's so fast and that's, it's so able to understand concepts and pick up on energy, but it can, it can run away from you. It can feel like it's spinning out of control. And it's hard to gain control over a mind like that. A lot of times it manifests physiologically. You feel your heart beating quickly. You sweat. You feel faint. I think tapping back into your breath is highly, highly, highly important for you. The good thing here is that because your only your fear is fear itself is that it totally rests within you and all fears technically for me rest within ourselves but sometimes there can be external factors that really are are so present and so intense but your biggest fear is is this internal energy yeah because it looks like she's here in the dark and nighttime and that just it's the fear of the unknown the fear of the dark the fear of what you cannot see is overwhelming to you at times I'm curious to see what your hidden dreams and desires are because I have a good feeling that, I mean, we, we want those things. We want our dreams and our desires. This fear is the thing that's holding you back from those things. So let's tap into the hidden dreams. What is your higher self calling you towards? What is it that you want to accomplish here in this lifetime on this planet? Spirit. I think you want to build something. You want to make your mark on the world. You want to create something new unique and you have the ability to do that your mind is so 
quick and intelligent that it seems like you have that it you have that ability to invent what you create is going to have a personality and that could be where some of this fear lies is that you are so unique and so to put yourself out there is scary to start this thing to build this really unique thing to manifest something different is scary because you really don't know how it's going to come out how people are going to receive it but that is not for you to worry about all you can do in this lifetime is follow what your heart and your higher self are trying to guide you to do do in the physical world what feels good to your your higher sense of self i think you have a desire to bring your ideas into this world To offer this golden nugget of brilliance to the world, to your family, to your community, to inspire others. Yeah, it's the dream of creating something really different and unique. What is your hidden desire? What earthly thing? What kind of earthly desire do you have? What kind of earthly desire does pile number one have that's hidden? And the reason these things are hidden sometimes is that we're not bringing our awareness to them. Or we're not speaking them out loud. Even to ourselves. So we push them, we suppress them to make ourselves more comfortable, to make life feel easier. I'm not going to lie. To stay in this fearful energy is the easier option. To reach for what we're dreaming of or what we're desiring, it requires work. It requires us to sit down And do the breathing exercises, to do the meditations, to, you know, sit down at our desk and write every day or to put ourselves out there to meet loving partners and people and community. It requires action. This doesn't require any action, but it's also highly uncomfortable And I know that you don't want to live in this discomfort. You want to do something bigger, greater, and you have the capability. It's what you're meant to do. It's what your higher self is calling you towards. It's why you're here on this earth is to express yourself, to put out your unique ideas to inspire others by your brilliant mind, to harness this mind. All right, let's get the hidden desires, the hidden earthly, the three of cups. I think your desire is to surround yourself with like-minded individuals to find community here on this earthly plane. And I promise you, pile number ones that when you start to put your unique self out there into the world to put your ideas your artwork uh, your videos your your personality out into the world in whatever form is is in your heart space you will be surrounded by like-minded individuals community members Friends, lovers, business partners, absolutely. This can be a lonely place to rest in this anxiety. 
you know, this is just a random channeling and so only take it if it resonates with you. But being honest about these fears, writing about these fears, making videos about these fears, speaking about these fears to other people to just in a really honest way can help them and you can create community that way to write about your experience. Writing is coming up so I don't know if, if that's something that some of you feel in your heart but it could be anything. It's just, it's a physical creation that I think your higher self is, is calling you to put out into the world. And you will, again, from this place, be surrounded by, by support, love and support on this earthly plane. Speaking of support... <laughs> What, how are your guides, how is spirit supporting you from the spiritual realm, from this realm that we can't physically see with our own eyes here? How are you receiving support? How is pile number one receiving support, spirit, from their guides, their angels, their ancestors? justice so the message that's coming through with this justice card is that you're being supported in the spiritual realm if if you become aware of this idea of justice this spiritual justice always being a thing it can help ease your mind. And this is how. Let's say you have a negative experience with another person and you maintain your, you take the high road, as we say. They kind of do something shady and low vibe, but you don't, you don't react to that you you stay in this place of love you maintain that awareness and connection to your heart space and to love this is saying that this other party that maybe did something shady they will realize that eventually they will see the truth of this situation. And sometimes that takes time, but I promise you it always happens. It just does. Or if they don't realize it on their own, something happens externally that it just, it, it shows the truth of this situation. So it's this idea of as long as you follow your heart, you have nothing to fear because even if something negative comes your way, you can rest in the peaceful knowing that as long as you st stick with your heart space, your higher self, if you s maintain a vibration of love and honesty and truth, you will always be on the correct side of the scale. It's like you are going to be able to maintain this equilibrium and you can go to bed at night in a state of peace knowing that you've acted from that high vib vibratory space. There is nothing to fear if you live your life with in integrity and honesty from a true place, from a loving place. Like we said, things can come at you externally from that place and it might feel kind of shitty at first, but then when you, when you tap into your, your guides 
they're going to say, good job. We're proud of you for maintaining your, your emotional balance and recognizing that this person or this thing is coming from a place of immature, immaturity. And they'll learn the lesson eventually. Don't worry about it. You know, so find comfort here. Find comfort in this knowing. Let that help you release yourself from this fearful state and just live from your heart. Put out your creations. No need to worry what comes at after that. Just that is, you're going to find success there. You're going to find community there. People that really love and support you for exactly who you are. And anything else that happens outside of that, it will balance on its own. It's not, you don't need to do anything about that. Spirit's got your back in that way. Cool. Yeah. All right. So let's turn over these Oracle cards and see what other messages want to come out. So grace. Yeah. It's just about maintaining that, that internal balance, that internal knowing being able to flow with life because you you rest in this deep sense of of trust that you're so protected, supported. It's about maintaining a certain level of flexibility with life, about not being too rigid, just allowing things to unfold as they unfold. And again, I understand how scary and anxiety inducing that can be to develop this trust in spirit but and to to develop this trust in your higher self in your higher self's dreams and to go for it you know but you're meant to and this looks like to me a performer too I think you're meant to be seen your your ideas your your personality is meant to be shown and it's so beautiful it's so lovely I did this deck is is incredible it's called the Archeo just the Archeo Oracle deck by Nick Bancock and our Bantock and he writes these little stories for each one of these cards so I just want to read that story for you talk about someone with a unique vision and personality this dude has it all right the grace's tale a storm was coming but the great oaks felt confident that their deep roots massive limbs and powerful trunks would protect them from anything the winds might bring looking down at the young trees spread around their feet they doubted the saplings would survive the night when the storm arrived it was more powerful than the oaks had imagined, tearing into them, stripping away leaves and branches, wrenching their roots from the soil and eventually toppling them. Lying broken on the forest floor, the big trees looked with envy as the saplings swayed and danced impervious to the wind's wrath. That's exactly what I mean about this justice card. It's, it's like when you come from this innocent place of purely being who you are you're so protected in that space you know sometimes people when they get older or whatever if they want to fit in in a certain way they can become rigid and forget about the uniqueness that their soul carries and they forget how their brain tries to trick them and say living that way is is the scary thing that's the the thing that's going to get you into trouble but it's the exact opposite Truly. And the other kind of thing that I was thinking, let's see. Yeah, so just, I think your greatest stability is to, is to maintain that sense of innocence, of curiosity, of tapping into that inner child, tapping into that higher self. being flexible just for one moment you know just pretend that you're a child again that you have nothing to worry about you have no bills to pay 
none of that stuff that adults have in their life. What, what would you want to do? How would you want to spend your time? And start spending time that way. Because you're going to put, you're going to create something that is going to support you physically, materially, financially. And it's going to bring community, love, support your way. Don't you worry about anything external, how anyone's going to view you or see you. Let them view you or see you that way. That's not your issue. Eventually, they're going to see you dance. They're going to see you shine. And they're going to realize that any judgment that they had placed on you, it wasn't, it was only based in their fears. It's going to shed light there. And that's where the justice comes in. All right. So, yep, you guys, youth, yes. Tap into that innocent spirit. And look, you know, they, they're they so purely connecting these two figures in this card. They're just enjoying life. Tap into your innocence and you will find these other spirits just like you. Just doing the same thing. It's fun. It's exciting too. It's, it's jovial. It's, you know, it's... It's meeting people who are really deeply on your level. All right, piercing the veil. Card 28. This makes me think of along with these cards is that they say that really young people and really old people have a deeper connection or a, like the veil is thinner between the spirit realm and the earthly realm they can they have either memories of the spirit realm at a young age or when they're older they're just they've shed so much during this life and they've kind of gotten to this relaxed state enough to be able to see visions of where they're heading back to to the spirit realm and in your case Tapping into this innocence is going to give you the power. It's going to strengthen your intuition. It's going to give you more access to your spirit. Which is going to give you access to the inspiration. The ideas that, are, that you're meant to create. So what makes you feel like you can let the rigidity go? What makes you feel young again? What makes you belly laugh? What, what helps you shed these fears? Do those things. Laughter is really, really potent and powerful medicine in that way. It brings us back to that child. So what, ask yourself what makes you laugh and start gifting yourself those things. All right, finally, we have don't let pride get in your way. The full moon in Leo. Leo is such a playful energy, so vibrant and stunning. But this is making me think of being too sure that life is this way or that way, being too sure that it's always going to be this way or that way, being too fixed in any energy or mental space, thinking that, nope, there's no way I'm going to get out of this. There absolutely is a way that you're going to get out of this. And it's by opening up to that, that purity and innocence again. And it's so natural for you to be there. Leos naturally can do that pretty well. Unless they get fixed in kind of a negative and selfish kind of energy. That's not, you know, you're meant to be open to this world. To shine. For real. To truly shine. And it's like when people see you, they're, they're seeing your spirit. 
And it is, it's like pure light. It's joy. It's brilliance. I love this reading for you, pile number ones. And I'm really, really excited for you to tap into, to let this fear go. Just knowing that you're capable of that, being aware of it, doing the work, catching yourself mentally whenever you start negative self-talk or whenever you notice your body's reacting. But just noticing what you need in any given moment, what your body needs. And instead of letting the anxieties, the fears, the mental negativity bring you down do something positive to combat it you're so capable and it's going to bring you into this beautiful beautiful state of grace of peace of balance of joy of liveliness of fun so i'm wishing you so much luck i'm sending you love and light and gratitude thank you for being here I love you, love you, love you, and I will see you in the next one. Hello, pile number twos. For those of you who chose the new moon tarot and the blue gold stone, this is your reading. I want to quickly go over what we're going to be doing here. So I'm going to get four cards from the tarot deck that you chose. And we are going to be looking at four different categories of what is hidden, what this shadow side is trying to let you know, what messages are trying to come forth. The first card that we're going to be getting is asking what hidden fears are lying in the shadows that are keeping you from fully expressing and fully being in your your power and your energy. Next, we're going to get what hidden dreams are hidden in the shadows, meaning what is your higher self calling you towards, that highest state of being? What does it want you to pursue or know? The third card we're going to get is what hidden desires are lying in the shadows, meaning material desires, earthly desires. And we'll see what message comes through for that. And then finally, what hidden support is is lying beyond your current knowing, maybe is lying within your subconscious. What is spirit? How is spirit trying to support you on your journey? All right, and then after we get the tarot, we've ar- I've already shuffled and pulled some oracle cards for you and we'll reveal those after the tarot. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right in. We're going to start with Hidden Fears. Spirit, what Hidden Fears would like to be revealed to pile number twos? What hidden fears would like to come and show themselves and be illuminated? The seven of pentacles. So the Seven of Pentacles is the card that suggests that you've already put in a lot of time and effort to something and you're in this point, this moment where maybe you feel exhausted and you don't quite, like your higher self believes that the seeds that you planted are going to sprout and and give you the gifts of abundance. But maybe your lower mind, your fearful mind, is, is a little afraid 
that what you've worked on, what you've put your time into, isn't going to bear fruit. It will. It will. It just takes time and patience. Whenever you feel this fear coming up within you, the message is coming through that it could be really helpful to connect with spirit in those moments, to pray, to meditate, to slow down. A fearful mind is, is an overthinking mind. So to slow down and take pride in the work that you've done. Find the gratitude in those moments. One second, I'm going to turn this down. This sounds a little too loud. But yes, take gratitude. Find the gratitude for the work that you've done because you've put in a lot of energy into something, into whatever you're creating or into the relationships that you've been nurturing, um, any business ideas or, or projects that you've been pursuing. Keep going, but take some time to breathe and rest into the fact the fact that you've done so much already and the energy of gratitude for that energy that you've put in. Yeah, the moon on this card to me kind of suggests something that's unseen. Like we were mentioning before, the fruits of your labor. And they're still underground. But they will sprout. They will bear fruit. They will be seen. Let's move on to what hidden dreams are lying in the shadows. What does your higher self want you to connect with and pursue and remember? What hidden dreams are lying in the shadows for pile number two, Spirit? The three of cups. To connect with with others, either in this earthly realm or in the spiritual realm. Your spirit guides, your higher self, is saying that it's so important for you to, what's the word I'm looking for? To communicate with others, but what's, what's the word? I can't think of it. But your higher self is saying, and it feels pretty spiritual to be honest that you find connections with others on a spiritual level that you take time to remember your spiritual connections outside of this earthly plane as well these teacups are kind of making me think of of those moments those quiet moments when you just have a, a hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee and you're really appreciating it and if others are, are around you're you're super present with the people around you you're present with what the gift of the time that you have with others the connection the collaboration there's a lot that your higher self is aware that you can pull into your life from your connections with others, again, here on this earthly plane and your connection to your, your spirit guides, your ancestors, your angels, whatever the case may be for you. And to connect on an emotional level too. Being able to really open up and share your feelings, share your fears. This will be incredibly helpful and supportive if ever these fears crop up, I think you'll quickly be reminded that you're doing a good job. The work that you've put in is, is incredible, it's worthy, and it will bear fruit. It could also help you in those moments where you have to be patient and wait to connect with others and, and find the levity and joy in the waiting moments. To not do it alone. 
Yeah, that's really beautiful, actually. I love that so much. All right, what hidden desires would like to be shown or seen? And this is earthly desires, material desires. What hidden desires are hidden from pile number twos? The Three of Swords. You may have a de desire to express the pain that you've been through in life. Anything that is weighing heavily on your heart to connect. We have two threes coming out. So I think it's highly important that you find friendships and people, like-minded souls, to expose the things that you've carried so deeply within you. And that could be one of the keys to, to fertilize these seeds that you've planted and help them grow is releasing this pain that you hold inside, this sadness, this grief that weigh heavily on your heart and mind. Doing so will help you transform and help others around you transform as well. This looks like to me like a rattlesnake. And the idea for me, the idea is coming out of when a rattlesnake is fearful for its survival or it feels um, like some someone is encroaching on its space and it needs to protect itself, it shakes its tail and it scares the, the person away. I think you've had to, you've had to protect yourself in so many ways. And I think you want to relieve yourself of that burden of constantly needing to be alert, aware. Finding others can help you ease that pressure. They can help protect you too, so you're not doing it alone. Yeah, but speaking openly and honestly, I think you have a hidden desire to release painful experiences through your words, through connection. All right, so let's hop into what hidden support are you not seeing or not aware of right now? How is spirit helping you? How is our people on this earthly plane wanting to step in? Let's see. Spirit. This deck is so beautiful, right? I love the gold leafing on the, or whatever they call it. It's just lovely. Makes me just want to say that you are golden. You're beautiful. You're powerful. You're lovely. All right. So hidden support, the hermit. Your reading is awfully spiritual. Pile number twos. Your hidden support lies within your own wisdom within your own spiritual energy, within the slow moments of connection that are so high vibratory, that are so pure. It's interesting because your hidden fear is kind of the fear of things taking too long to show themselves or the seeds to, or the progress to show itself. Progress is, is slow and sometimes we don't notice it, but I promise you it is happening. And the more you kind of find gratitude and use this slow energy to your benefit, I think the quicker you're going to start seeing things. It's interesting, right? How that goes. Meditation and prayer and... A balance, too, between connecting with others and, and spending time alone, but never really being alone. 
being con- always connected to your your spiritual support it's it's elevating you it's helping you become aware of what you need what wants to what you really desire to be released from you and i don't know if since this is kind of a hidden desire in material form it could be that you have that you're wanting to break it off with something a relationship or a job or kind of a certain lifestyle or a way of being you're wanting to let it go even though it feels scary because it can be painful it's vastly important for you to tap into spirit into your spiritual support team right now because they're going to help you like i said be aware of what needs shedding so that you can start to see the seeds of your true self of your true desires of your true intentions manifestations sprout and begin to be seen let's hop into the oracle cards all right so from this illuminator yeah in these slow moments this is a lighthouse which is just a sturdy and it kind of gives me vibes of the hermit because the hermit we often associate with the the idea of a mountain of climbing the mountain and spending time on that mountain in solitude close to spirit and receiving downloads inspiration healing energy wisdom through that process and the lighthouse very much gives me that same feeling it is just a sturdy kind of structure that is a beacon of protection peace it's an oasis for for struggling sailors for people that are in tricky emotional waters they can come to this lighthouse and peacefully kind of recollect themselves and find their bearings and wisdom again without the fear slow energy I know it's not easy to to be a part of from day to day. I've so been there. I am oh, I've just gone through active periods of impatience in life. But when I look back on those, I recognize that there was so much to be gained within those experiences. So much that it sets you up for in the future. The abundance that really exists for you. These calm periods where things aren't happening. They're necessary. They're valuable. I really, I love this deck and I really, each card has the uh, creator of this deck, Nick Bantock wrote a little story for each card and they're so lovely so I wanted to read the one for your card the illuminator's tale on a moonless night life shafts light shafts from the pharaohs would pass through the city streets illuminating palm fronds and red tiled roofs in one street the beacon proscribed an arc of light against a tall stone wall giving the illusion of a ghostly archway Being a city of superstition, the Alexandrians felt compelled to follow the lighthouse's implied instruction, so they carved a gate into the wall where the lux struck the stone. Before long, a rumor grew that the pharaoh's gate was blessed and that anyone in mortal danger might pass through its portal and find sanctuary in the underworld. Yeah, so what you're going through can feel deep and dark. Your sanctuary is with spirit right now, with your own and with your guides. 
and with any spirit in the on the earthly plane that speaks to your soul that you jive with on that deep and high level all right so your next card fighting yeah i'm sorry if you just feel like you're it's you're struggling right now you're going through something that it feels like resistance oh i I'm resonating with you like you know what you're capable of and you're putting action into it you know what you you want um, but there's just there's not a whole lot of ease happening with it right now or maybe not a whole lot of clarity that you're feeling right now on a superficial level that clarity exists but you've got to take time to slow down and and put your sword down and stop fighting and just accept things and and know deeply that they won't always be this way oh I know how hard this can be pile number twos I'm really sorry mm. All right, so you have Wild Orchids, card number 11. The dragonfly, again, is making me think of kind of mysterious, spiritual, dreamy energy. Orchids are also kind of giving me that vibe. I'm going to read from the guidebook a little bit for yours because the message isn't super clear to me yet. Let's see. Something hidden is what it says. <laughs> Isn't that appropriate for this, right? Okay, lush and verdant, these wild orchids honor the exquisite beauty of the plant kingdom. Embedded in this card is the geometry of the star tetrahedron. However, something is hidden. Eyes look out from the two green hearts, quietly watching and waiting to see what will be, will, what will be revealed. The dragonfly is here to help you dispel illusion. This card asks you to look within and contemplate what you may be hiding or what is being hidden from you. This is not about intentional deception. There is no sense of trickery or lies. Nevertheless, something you have not considered may be affecting your inquiry. View the beauty of these wild orchids and ask your inner knowing to uncover things hidden so that you may gain a broader perspective of your current situation. Simply recognizing that you are holding back may prompt your awareness to reveal what has been unseen. Your willingness to bring to light things concealed may open the doors of your perception and strengthen your ability to experience the wholeness of the situation. It's so important for you to start expressing yourself and what is lying in your, in your mind and in your emotional body. Because I can sense, and it's just the hidden fear is, is like it said, it's the things that are hidden. It's the things that you can't see yet. And you so clearly are, are craving clarity and insight into maybe what moves to make next or what to let go or any, any kind of information about what you're going through or experiencing right now. But to start being brutally honest with yourself and maybe even speaking to other people could really help you find the insight that you've been searching for. It could help that insight start popping up out of the ground. That clarity. That wisdom. Mm. All right, your final card. Don't let your past hold you back. Yep. Your past hurts, your past pains. It's existing within you and it's so important that you begin to start allowing it to, to come out and be released because it's you're always going to fight it until you let it be seen, known, heard, listened to suppressing it won't do you any good mm. 
This is really powerful, pile number twos. I'm sending you so much loving support on this journey. I've been here. You're not alone, okay? I totally understand the feeling of, of having certain, feeling certain things and maybe not feeling comfortable allowing them to be seen, holding things within your body, secrets or, or emotions that you really want to be seen deep down. You really want to be expressed, but there's, there's fear of letting them, of, of doing so. But you have the capability and it's only going to help lift you out of this kind of tricky, resistant energy. It's going to lighten your vibration after and I promise you the fear is worse than the actual action of letting it out and be seen. Of allowing yourself to be vulnerable. I think you'll find that if you're wise about who you tell, they're going to be much more receptive and and open than you could have possibly imagined. You're going to find so much support there and you are incredibly supported on the spiritual realm. Okay, so if you don't quite feel comfortable speaking these these kind of painful painful memories or painful emotions to people on this earthly plane, speak them out loud to your spirit team. Allow them to shed light on you to make you feel seen and supported. That's step number one. You've got this. Pile number twos. You've got this. You're beautiful. You are golden, like we said. So golden. Thank you, pile number twos, for being here. Again, I'm sending you all the love and light in the world, and I will see you in the next one. Pile number threes. <laughs> Hello. For those of you who, th who chose the Kaleidoscope Tarot and this Rhodonite Crystal, this is your reading. I'm going to go through quickly what we're going to be doing here today. So we're going to get four cards from the tarot deck that you chose. Each one symbolizing something that is hidden in your subconscious. First, we're going to be going through any hidden fears that are wanting to be illuminated. Next, any hidden dreams. What is your higher self calling you towards? What is that voice trying to tell you? Then we'll go into the hidden desires, meaning what on this material plane are you desiring that could be hidden from you? And finally, what hidden support, spiritually, earthly support, whatever the case may be, is wanting to be exposed through this reading? Okay, so and then after that... <laughs> We'll turn over these four oracle cards that I've already shuffled and drawn for you guys. All right, so let's start with your hidden fears, pile number threes. Spirit. Spirit. What hidden fears? are existent and would like to be illuminated for pile number three. Hidden fears for pile number three. Four of coins. Hmm. 
The fear of letting things go. The fear of maybe spending on something that you're scared to financially invest because, you know, it's risky to do so. You don't, you don't want to let your material possessions go in any way for fear that you won't see a return on your investment. You're fearful of putting your energy into something. Maybe a relationship or some kind of earthly matter for fear that you won't see a return on that energy that you put in. You're fearful of letting yourself relax a little bit, release a little bit. You're kind of rigidly just holding tight for fear of what letting go could bring. Let's see what the hidden dream is. What is your higher self, the highest version of yourself, the version of yourself that is most connected to spirit? What is it dreaming for you? What is it wanting you to remember? What hidden dream exists? For pile number three. Hmm. Wow. Intense energy you have. I don't really do this often, but I I feel like I want another card for clarity here. Can we get clarity on this? This is the devil energy, by the way, which represents being super attached to something. It is earthly energy again. So it's almost like your spirit is wanting to attach itself to something on the material realm. It could be a relationship, like we had mentioned briefly with the first card. And with the flames here, I don't really bring this up often, so it's kind of catching me off guard, but you could have a twin flame and your spirit is... is wanting to call that person in and attach itself. But again, let's let's get some clarity here because it's it's a tricky energy, right? That your highest self is calling you towards this devil energy. The devil energy is Capricorn energy. It's it's consistent kind of effort on in the highest form it's consistent effort that allows you to achieve material and worldly success so that is the hidden dream here of wanting to really see for lack of better words, material things become really sturdy and stable in your life. And maybe that's why you're kind of fearful of letting go of what you have. It's because you actually, you want the abundance. You want kind of success. Okay, let's get a clarity card on this devil. What is this devil card here? Pile number threes. Yeah, it's kind of wanting to step into this passionate power that exists within you. This fiery nature that exists within you, this spiritual nature that exists within you. 
and allowing it to bring to you the relationships that you want, the financial abundance that you want, the home that you want to live in, the community that you want to surround yourself with. You know, people don't really say this much, but I've noticed with certain Capricorns that I've met in my life that they really do thrive on uh, community, on having community around them, people in their lives. But it does, it feels kind of like you really want to build some kind of like relationship or business that is really successful. Not just a little successful, but really successful. And because it's coming from your highest self, I think you're meant to do that. Pile number threes. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see what your hidden desires are. For pile number threes, what are the hidden des It's funny because this hidden desires card, my intention was that it would be what hidden desires do you want on this material plane, on this earthly plane? But your kind of spiritual dreams are very material indeed. Like there's a connection between spirit and and earth for you. What hidden desires would like to be revealed for pile number threes? Wow, more earth energy, you guys. You desire, you are like the CEO of the, the piles that I've done so far for this reading. You want to be inspired to build, you want to find some kind of inspiration to build something big and you want to put in the work to make it as big as it, can, as it possibly can be. You want to build something. And this is really, I actually am digging on this energy so hard right now because I feel this in my own life. It's like you want to create some kind of massive stability for yourself that's long lasting and I think your fear is that it's not going to happen quite simply you want to put in that diligent work that methodical work you're you're like built for that and you're ready for it right now like just mentally and physically you're prepared to put the work in and that's, how exciting is that? So many people struggle with getting to this point of, of being able to do this, to put in the time and the effort, but you're, like I said, you're built for this. I, I feel inspired by you massively. This energy is really cool. It also feels like a pretty masculine energy, if I'm being honest. Let's see what the hidden support is. And if that's what you're feeling right now, that your masculine energy is what you're, you're kind of wanting to tap into and harness and, and work with, do it. Because this reading is kind of saying that that could be helpful for you right now high vibe masculine energy this king of wands type energy jovial don't forget to have fun I've been wanting to say this but I and I should have look the sun um I think you can lighten up a bit Capricorns can be quite serious at times I think this king of wands is giving a little bit of advice from your highest self saying, we, I, I know and see that you want to work on something. You want to attach yourself to your dreams, to what you, what you want to build. And that is, you're meant to do that. But do so with a lightness of heart, with a jovial quality. You don't have to 
be so rigid. Okay. What hidden support exists for pile number three? The king of swords, more masculine energy. <laughs> the support of... And with these two kings coming out here, you could be seeing actual people, and we were speaking about community, uh, people in your lives that can help support you. you can, honestly, with what you want to create, the bigness of it, the vastness of it, I think you're not going to be able to do it alone. And look at this devil card. You know, there's two people here. Getting support from those around you that have achieved something like what you're trying to achieve uh, will definitely help you raise yourself into that kind of vibration. Even if you watch videos of people who have achieved the success that you have in your mind, that will help you vibe in that manner and attract the ideas, the abundance, the kind of velocity that, or the, the motivation, the determination that you, you want to embody. I love this reading. This is so fantastic. I'm typically someone who, who thrives in the feminine, but uh, I don't know. I'm feeling this masculine energy for you guys. Yeah, so the King of Swords is, if it is somebody external to you, it's somebody who might kind of appear unemotional, but they've got a brilliant and tactful mind. They have mastered the art of strategy. They know how to put their pieces in order and make them work. They know how to invest their time, their energy, their money in such a way that everything becomes efficient and succinct. And that is the energy that will support you internally as well. If you step into, you kind of plan out, you strategize. It will help you achieve what your higher self is dreaming about and what your physical self is desiring. But don't become too rigid. I think you have a fear of becoming too rigid through this process because you do have to be strategical. And Is that a word? Strategic. <laughs> Um, and so you fear, like, is this going to make me into this cold, unemotional being? It doesn't have to. Remember this King of Wands energy and try to have fun while you work. You know, listen to music, dance around a little bit while you work. You don't have to be this figure made of stone or glass. Yeah, let that passion come through and enjoy it, you know? Laugh. Find that levity. Oh, I can't tell you how much I love this reading right now. Okay, let's get into your oracle cards. Duende. So I believe duende is like a... Oh, what is it? Like a... Like a leprechaun or something like that in Spanish language. Maybe not. Um, yeah, it kind of just looks like this. This figure to me is you. This figure in the center. And you're finding your strength and your direction. This figure, it almost feels like a guide. Or like some kind of force outside of you that's helping you find your strength and direction. I want to read a little bit from the guidebook. The creator of this deck, Nick Bantock, 
he's written a story for each one of these cards and I'm always blown away by them. So I wanted to read the story so we can get a little more insight here. Okay, the Duende's Tale. Sometimes I see the Duende in the glimpse of a sparrow's eyes or in a painting or in, a shade, or in the shade of a passing galaxy. But mostly I just feel it. I feel it out there, just beyond the edges of our furthest vision. Gold and Prussian blue, wheels of ebony trimmed with steel cobwebs, rotating cogs, clockwork turning out sparks against an infinite sky. It tastes of brimstone and smells like moss and fireworks in the, in the night. It sounds both silent and saxophone and its almost touch against my skin is so exquisite that I can barely bring myself to purr. Yeah, it's like there's this force, this outside force, and it is, it's mysterious a little bit, but it's compelling you to, to move. <laughs> Oof, wow. And the way it talked about brimstone uh, I remember the term brimstone from the movie Shrek whenever they're going to the dragon's lair or whatever. And so it's kind of like this devil energy. Yeah, it's this hidden thing that is, is, is drawing you to act. Drawing you to build something. And you can't not do it. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're too rigid, you may feel the call but not be able to interpret it or, or fully understand that it is what it is, you know? So to loosen up a bit, to release some of the rigidity, you can understand and feel out this, this, this thing. <laughs> All right, let's see what your next card is. Obedience direction yeah there's something really like <sighs> there is something kind of rigid about this but in a good way you know it's it's like if you listen if you allow this flow okay actually there's two messages coming through but if you allow this flow you're going to know the, the direction to go in and you're going to be able to follow it sharply. Look at how this is pointing. But the other message is that in order to build something uniquely you, I think it's also important to detach yourself from any kind of obedient any kind of standards that society has put on you that you have followed that don't make sense to your highest version of self to kind of cut away those those ideas those rules follow your instinctual nature here oh that is that just gave that's it you know, the king of wands is are the cards of spirit, of instinct. And in order to fully follow your instinct, you have to detach a little bit from what society is telling you to do and and listen to this this other thing, this more etherical thing, this more spiritual thing. And the way this, so to me, it's like this is you. And you have this instinctual knowing within you, represented by this dog. This is, this is society here telling you to go this way. But you, I think you're listening to and questioning what society is telling you and learning how to listen to your instincts more because you recognize that that is actually going to lead you to, and it might lead you kind of in the same direction but it's going to be more aligned for you, you know, 
just continue questioning along your path, along this route, within this experience. Continue questioning and continue to take time to tap into your instinctual energy, to your gut feelings. It's like you might know that the way society or or this whatever force here is is leading you to and maybe you agree with that but you still want to do it in your own way and I support that (laughs) all right receiving wow out of all the cards that have been so kind of masculine this one gives me a little bit of a feminine energy because it's asking you to tap into this otherworldly force And now we finally get like a full-on feminine energy, receiving. And it rests just below this Duende card. Which kind of just solidifies what what we were saying. Of of taking those moments to listen to your instinct, to to receive the messages from your spirit, from your higher self. All right, your last card. Have faith in your dreams. Let go of this fear of of needing to know everything have faith that your actions, have faith that what you want to do is right for you. If you're, if you are taking this time to tap into your, your kind of more feminine side just for moments, to know, to receive the, the, the guidance, to, to remember what your gut is telling you, to know that that is is real and true and is pointing you in the right direction and that the work that you you do for those dreams it's going to bring you to the exact place where you want to be to this success yeah let your instincts guide your way and have faith that they're guiding you right along with your spiritual team, your passion. Know that it's guiding you correctly. Powerful, powerful energy, pile number threes. Wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for gifting me with this reading. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Pile number fours. (laughs) Hello and thank you for being here. For those of you that chose the bad girl tarot and this hematite crystal, this is your reading. And I'm so excited. This is the first time I'm doing a fourth pile. So welcome pile number four. (laughs) All right, so I'm going to go through what we are going to be covering in this reading. I'm going to draw four cards from the tarot deck that you chose, each representing something that is hidden from you. Card number one will represent any hidden fears that are lying in the shadows. Card number two will represent any hidden dreams, meaning what is your higher self calling you toward? Card number four will be what hidden desires are lying in the shadows, Um, what material things or relationships or whatever are you you craving, are you desiring? And finally, what hidden support are you not seeing Uh, from spirit or from earthly energies? We'll see what comes out, but these will be the four tarot cards. And then after that, we, uh, I've already shuffled and pulled four oracle cards for you, and so we'll, we will reveal those after the tarot. All right, let's get into it. We're going to start with the hidden fears. Spirit. 
What hidden fears? I love this deck, by the way, so much. I love the way it handles. I love the artwork on it. So I'm excited to get into this one. What hidden fears would like to be illuminated for pile number four, Spirit? What hidden fears would like to be illuminated for pile number four? What hidden fears would like to be illuminated for pile number four? So we have the Knight of Swords here. Are you afraid of some kind of message coming through? Not knowing what it will bring or what it will be? Like you're waiting for some kind of communication to come your way. And yeah, you're scared of, you're either scared of some kind of message coming your way or you're scared to communicate something yourself to someone or, or to put your ideas out there. It could be both, to be honest. You could be scared to communicate your ideas or communicate some kind of message that you've held within you. And then on the reverse side, be scared of what the, the communication or the message is going to be coming back to you. Because both will happen, right? Or on the opposite hand, like if you're scared of a certain message coming your way, because then you're going to feel like you don't know how to respond or or you're scared of responding honestly, or something along those lines. Let's jump into the other cards, because I, I know that will bring us some clarity here. Let's go next to what your hidden dreams are. What is your highest self calling you towards? Your highest and most pure form of being. What is it calling you towards? The Eight of Cups, to walk away, to leave something behind. Hmm. In a very straightforward way, maybe you're trying to leave behind certain relationships or a certain relationship and you're scared of telling that person that that's what you want to do. You're fearful of what their reaction might be. It could be that you want to leave a job, a relationship, a home. You're ready to explore. Knights are explorers. And so you, that could be something you innately feel within yourself that you want to see more in the world. You want to be in the world a little bit more but you're scared of making that move, of leaving behind certain people, places, or things and kind of stepping into the unknown a little bit. What hidden desires? What, materi what are you wanting on the material plane? Kind of on a, in a deep way. The Ten of Cups. Oh my gosh, you guys, you want emotional fulfillment. You want joy in your life. You want brightness, lightness, levity. And it requires you leaving shadowy aspects behind dark things that pull your energy down, that keep you from this Ten of Cups place. I love this card. I oh, Whenever I see it, to me it always looks like this girl is <laughs> kind of exposing herself to, to the free air. Um, it's like this fuck it attitude. 
this ah uh, it's so free feeling to me and i think you want to feel free i think you want to embody this fuck it attitude a little bit of just being able to kind of follow your instincts and have fun with it and enjoy Follow what brings you pleasure and leave behind what brings you down. And I know how scary it can be to communicate those kind of feelings to the people around you. I really do. And so you have a choice. The swords for me always kind of represent a choice to be made air energy it's like there's two sides it's a double-edged sword there's you know you can go this way or that way you can choose to stay or you can choose to go you can allow your fears to hold you back or you can say fuck it i'm gonna pursue joy and what I love. I'm going to walk away. My highest self is begging me to walk away from the things that are dragging me down. So it kind of appears you're in this in-between space right now. And I know you don't want to exist there for the rest of your life. <laughs> but I also completely understand and commiserate with how tricky this can feel as well. To kind of say, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this old stuff behind. I'm going to follow my dreams, my curiosity. I'm going to follow what brings me joy. I'm going to follow the rainbow. <laughs> I'm going to follow the light, the color. Ugh. All right, so let's see what hidden support is lying in the wings here. What hidden support exists for pile number fours? What hidden support exists for pile number fours? Spirit. Sticking up for yourself and what you want. Knowing that you have the power within you to say, no, I'm, I'm going to do what's right for me. And I'm going to defend that to the end. The support lies within your own spirit. That power, that badassness, that power lies within knowing your spirit and protecting it with everything you have. Protecting it so it can shine. So it can live and be free and experience. So it cannot be held back anymore. So it can be joyful again. Let's see what your oracle cards have to say. Your first one. Fatalist. And look how she's kind of it's like that in between she's having a balance to walk this this toe this line. But through finding this balance, she's going to be able to proceed with a high level of skill. It could be, it, it's really making me think of decision making again. Like, do you want to continue on the path that you're on? Even if it feels a little bit uncomfortable. Or do you want to choose something different? 
the creator of this deck, Nick Bantock, he wrote a story for each one of these cards and I really like, I love them so much. So I want to read the one for the Fatalist. She tossed the three yellowing dice into the, minster, into the mincer and begging heaven's indulgence began to crank the old machine's wooden handle. At first there was resistance. Then the bones began to splinter and crack under the pressure of the rotating screw. From the mincer's mouth, mouth particles of dye were tossed out into a carefully positioned china mortar. Taking the pestle, she ground the fragments to a powder. Then adding a little water, she used the paste to fill in the cracks in his life. Having removed chance from the equation, she now felt confident that things would begin to improve. Yeah, I think by taking your power back, by realizing that you have the power to follow what your spirit is calling you to do. You're going to not feel like you're constantly having to balance on this thin strip of whatever it is. Maybe you feel like you're walking on eggshells in your life. And it's like you don't want to do it anymore. So you need to take your power back. Pile number fours. It said, having removed chance from the equation, she now felt confident that things would begin to improve. It's like having removed the idea that, oh, things will just get better or whatever. Anything external to you. Oh, it's going to shift. Oh, I'll stick it out a little bit more. Meanwhile, you're not tapping into your own spirit or your own power. But by doing so and walking away from the things that are keeping you from being free, things will improve massively. All right, let's look at your second card. Wedding. So it's bringing up relationships. The number five is talking about change. I think at the very least, on an emotional level, you know that things have to change. And so it's time to start speaking those truths. See the fear and do it anyway. Start saying what you want, what you need, what you desire. And yes, some relationships are going to have to go. But you can rest assured that, first of all, the relationship you have to yourself is going to improve. And second of all, you're going to start aligning with the relationships that make sense to, to this, this version of you. To this version of you. You're going to be able to live a life that feels fuller, happier, more celebratory. Instead of wondering every day when things are going to get better. I have to be honest. I, I just don't think in in this kind of energy that it will. Changes need to be made at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel sorry almost to deliver these messages, but they're necessary sometimes. And so, and I'm here to support you. Okay. Isosahedron or icosahedron? <laughs> Definitely going to have to look this up. All right. We got a 57 here, which breaks down to a 12, which breaks down to a 3. I'm going to read from the book here.
Perspective, New Beginnings. The icosahedron, with its 20 triangular faces, is one of five three-dimensional shapes called the platonic solids, the number five coming through again. The ico, is it icosahedron or I, whatever. The icosahedron is associated with the female side of our natures and the element of water. Emotion again, pile number four. It represents the beginnings of new consciousness. Choosing this card suggests that the subject of your inquiry has been on your mind for some time. You ruminate and question, but you are caught in thought patterns that offer no solution. It is time to seek a new perspective. Ask for inner guidance from the receptive female aspect of your being. Allow the flow to enter your thoughts in a way that releases old patterns and activates an awareness of what you need to know to free stuck energy and get things moving again. You may be surprised at how easily you untangle the situation once you see it from a fresh vantage point. Use this perspective to help you see the new beginnings that are set to arrive and move with ease and grace into the manifestation of your dreams and visions. Wow, that is so on point for what we're seeing here. And when I saw this figure on this card, the fatalist card, with her eyes uh, covered here, it did make me think of how sometimes when you are looking for answers, it can be helpful to close your eyes and to, to, like this card said, step into that female receptive energy, that feminine receptive energy to listen and allow those answers to come in. And it did mention that there's some kind of person on your mind. So uh, we're seeing relationships again some kind of emotional bond that you have with someone or something, which is, is really, it's, there's something that needs to be addressed here, 100%. And I think you know that. And I think maybe you have known that. All right. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> A new romantic cycle begins underneath this wedding card. Relationships, relationships, relationships. And it could be the relationship you have to life itself that has felt kind of stagnant. And you want to find your passion again, your romance again for life. But if, the, if this is a relationship in your life, it's saying you either need to walk away from it or figure out. First, you need to listen to yourself, to your highest self and figure out what needs to change. What do you need to walk away from in order to shift the... the uh, vibration there's a better word but shift the vibration of the relationship that you're in to make it into something new or to leave it all together and know that something better will come into your life and again it absolutely will so i don't know if you've been holding on to fear of making a choice or communicating something like we said because you don't know what the reciprocal action or answer is going to be but you are so protected in your honesty in your truth and if as long as you follow that it's going to lead you to the place that you desire on this material plane in this emotional way. Start speaking up for yourself. Start standing up for yourself. Recognize the strength that you have within you. 
and don't settle for anything less. Pile number four is because you deserve and you're aligned with something that is more than what I feel like you're currently feeling like you're receiving. You deserve to be free and have fun and enjoy and have companionship. Very cool reading, pile number fours. I am, I hope I said pile number four throughout this whole thing. <laughs> like I said, it was the first time I've done it. And so I, sorry if I ever said pile number three, but I know you're pile number four and I love you. And I'm, yeah, sending you so much support and love and gratitude for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you in the next one.